Hey, howdy everyone. I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I am teaching a machine learning course specifically focused on the subsurface, but general to any spatial and probably any multivariate problem. Try to make things pretty accessible here. Let's go ahead and dive into a discussion about Bayesian linear regression. And I have to confess something. I have been a little bit biased towards the frequentist approach. And so I think it's important we cover a little bit of Bayesian approaches to, for machine learning. We will have this lecture here on Bayesian linear regression, and we will also cover naive Bayes from the standpoint of regression also. All right, so let's dive into it. This is going to be a bit of a long lecture with multiple parts. I'll break it up into multiple videos so it's not too difficult to wade through. All right, what's the motivation? Why do we want to cover Bayesian linear regression? Well, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we um, extend from the frequentist approach to cover Bayesian types of approaches. Now, with the frequentist approach, what happens is we're really just focused on the fit of the model to the data. Now, with the Bayesian approach, what we're able to do is we can include a prior distribution for the model parameters, and we can then calculate a likelihood from the data in order to sample the posture for the model parameters. Everything is integrating uncertainty. A prior, the likelihood, the posterior of the parameters. All right, so let's go ahead, let's jump into it. First of all, a recap on linear regression. I did this last lecture. I don't wanna to get too much into it now, but the main points I should make is the fact that it's ordinary least squares regression. All we're doing is we're taking the data, we're very much a frequentist approach, we got our data, our observations, and we're going to minimize an L2 norm loss function based only on the training data. That's our only consideration. No prior model, no updating to a posterior. We are just estimating the model parameters from the data. And just to recall here the form of our linear regression model, it will be the response feature is equal to some constant term or intercept b naught plus a slope term or model parameter applied to the predictor feature x1 and we'll go ahead and we'll use that now, this would be the case of a single predictor feature to build a model for a single response feature pretty straightforward we can formulate the problem by looking at the data the predictor feature the response feature this is the model that we're trying to fit these are the error terms between the model and the response feature for each one of the predictor feature values at the training at the training data locations. And so our loss function is simply going to be an L2. We want to minimize the sum of the squares of the error. And so we have the actual true values, the model values here, and we want to minimize this in order to fit the best model. And of course, this extends to the case in which we have multiple predictor features our model would be shown right here where we're in fact taking the summation of the coefficient slope terms applied to each one of the model features alpha equals one through m predictor features and we could generalize and talk about the residual sum of squares and errors for that model making predictions at all of the training locations for the specific response feature Let's do a really quick recap on the Bayesian approach. And so we'll go back. There was a previous lecture on this. I also have an extended lecture within my Intro to Geostats course where I go into this quite a bit. We can look at the product rule. The product rule tells us that the joint probability B intersected with A event happening is equal to the conditional probability, the probability of A given B, times the probability of B. And so we could go ahead and we could look at a Venn diagram and we could immediately understand that that's the case. It wouldn't take much effort. All we'd have to do is take this probability B and put it in the denominator down there. And we could prove it to ourselves that the probability of A given B is simply going to be equal to this intersection right here divided by the probability b and vice versa the probability of b given a is simply going to be this intersected area divided by the probability of a and if you take the denominator put on the other side you get the product rule so not too hard 
Now it follows from just simple probability logic, it's axiomatic, that the probability of B intersection with A is equal to the probability of A intersected with B. The symmetry works. And so we could take and substitute the two product rules into this axiomatic statement about symmetry, and the result would be this right here. The probability of A given B times probability of B is equal to probability B given A times probability of A. And this is Bayes' theorem. Everything we're going to do with Bayesian methods is built upon this theorem. Now, why do we want to use Bayesian methodologies in our statistics and by extension within our statistical or machine learning? Well, first of all, it is more flexible than the frequentist approach. There's many classes of problems we can't solve very well with frequentist methods. Probabilities can be based on degree of belief. We are able to update with new information in a very nice manner, and so we can solve a lot of problems that frequentists would, there wouldn't quite be the methodologies to be able to do it. Now, just a final comment around Bayes' theorem, we can readjust it a bit more, take the probability of B out from the left-hand side, put it as the denominator on the right-hand side, and we get the most popular form of Bayes' theorem. And what's a couple observations? The first one is, it's quite cool that we can get the probability of A given B from the probability of B given A. And so this will come in very handy in many problems, and I show some of those problems in my earlier lecture on probability. There are many cases in which one of the conditional probabilities is readily available to you, and the other one would be very difficult to directly calculate. And so this ability to flip the conditional probabilities is very useful. In addition, we often label these terms. The probability of A is the prior. Probability of B given A is a likelihood. Probability of B is the evidence term. And the probability of A given B is the posture. Now, there's a couple of general comments we should make. The prior should have no information from the likelihood. In other words, we can't peak. We can't use information from the data we're updating with to inform the prior that's double dipping. And what will happen is we will prematurely shrink the uncertainty unfairly. Evidence term is usually just a standardization to ensure closure. But in many cases, the evidence term is kind of a tricky part of getting the job done. And we'll run into that when we talk about Bayesian linear regression. So Bayes' theorem, I like to look at it like this. I like to say it's the probability of the model given new data. And we use the prior, the original understanding of the model and the likelihood, the probability of the new data given the model. And we are dividing by a term that's really independent of the model, the evidence term. It is the probability of the new data. I, I, I think that's a really nice way to look at the problem. All right, so given that setup, what I'm going to do now is I'll get into a very brief discussion of Bayesian linear regression. So what's our problem with Bayesian linear regression? Well, I mentioned the fact that we're going to be working directly with distributions of uncertainty. And so that means we have to formulate our linear regression, the predictions we're making from the perspective of distributions, probability distributions. So what do we have? The prediction we want to make is the response feature, and it will be distributed. We'll assume it's Gaussian distributed, and that its conditional expectation is just simply going to be the coefficients of our model transposed by the predictor features of our model. Now if you look at that really carefully, you'll see that that's just the predictions from our linear regression model. We'll also say that the variance, because now we need a variance, we're not just concerned with the estimate, the variance in our estimate will be a sigma squared, and because it's going to be constant, it's just going to be a home scedastic variance, it's not going to depend on the estimate, and we, in order to get it into proper matrix notation, like we're doing here on the other side, we just have to take that constant scalar and apply it to the identity matrix. Okay, so now we have everything in term of distributions and matrix math, and we can make predictions of the entire distribution given all of the observations with the response features and our assessment of the homoscedastic variance. All right, so what's our problem now? How do we pose the estimation problem of our parameters 
in a Bayesian perspective. And here I've taken the notation, which is somewhat simplified the problem. There's, it can get much more complicated than this, complicated than this, but this is a nice expression of the problem, very simple for basics from the Hasty book on statistical learning. And so what we have here is we formulate the linear regression model considering the probability distributions and the prior before seeing the data instead of just training on the data. So now what we have is the posterior is going to be the probability of the specific parameters of our model given the observations in the response feature and the predictor feature. This is going to be based on a prior probability that we can pick we can assess what our prior probabilities are for the specific parameters. We can put an uncertainty distribution. It could be naive prior to, and I'll show you that. The likelihood term is the probability of the specific training examples in the response and the predictor feature given the model parameters. And we are going to normalize or divide by the evidence term, which is just the probability of the observations themselves. Okay, and you can recall the names, the labels of these different terms, map them back to those values right there. So let's go through and talk about each one of the parts. The prior, it's a guess of the model parameters over the predictor features based on expert knowledge. Maybe you know something about the problem. Maybe you had some previous information that we're not going to be using to update now, but some previous information we've gotten to a model before. It could also be naive or non-informative, and I'll show you an example of doing that. The likelihood term shown right here, it's the conditional distribution of the response and predictive feature is given the model. It's the data-driven part. It's the chance to update with the new observations. In machine learning speak, that's our training data and its impact upon the model. As the number of sample data increases, the likelihood is in fact going to become more precise. Its uncertainty will shrink and it will overwhelm the prior distribution at some point. So there's a kind of a cool push and pull between the prior and the likelihood. Conversely, if I use the prior, that's also very small variance. It could overwhelm the likelihood term. So they're competing with each other. They're two sources of information. Very cool stuff. The ev evidence term it's really a normalization constant. It ensures that we have closure of the system, that the posterior is a valid PDF, that the sum of the area under the curve is equal to 1. Now, what's very interesting is you can calculate it by integrating across the likelihood and prior over all possible combinations of the parameters. And if you do that, you'd be able to get this term. Turns out this is pretty tricky for continuous variables if you consider a higher dimensional space and so in general, this is part of the reasons why we're motivated to use Markov Monte Carlo methods to in fact sample from the posterior in a way that we don't have to work out the evidence term. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this in a little bit. And then the posterior, well, it's the conditional distribution of the model parameters given the response and predictor features that were observed within the training data. And also based on our prior model. And so this is really cool that we're able to build a model that has previous belief updated by local observations or new data. And so we have a combination of data driven and based on expert knowledge or belief. I should also comment that as the number of data goes very large, we in fact get a model that will converge upon ordinary least squares linear regression. We reach a point in which the problem really is solved as just data driven. It's so well informed by the data. So how do we solve for the posture distribution? Because that's now our challenge. We need to know what's the probability of specific parameters for our model given the observations and training and the prior information. And so generally what we can say is this is often, is it's going to be intractable for continuous features for us to solve this problem directly. It will require a sampling approach like Markov chain Monte Carlo. I'm going to end right there and I will record a separate video, a short video, which gives a very, very basic introduction to Markov chain Monte Carlo methods to sample and to get at this posture. And then I'll, I will have another video in which I show a solution for a model based on Python code and using some really great packages in Python to get the job done. All right, I hope this basic introduction has been useful to you on Bayesian linear regression. I am Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. 
I am the Geostack guy on GitHub and also on Twitter, where I share resources and workflows. I also have this YouTube channel, Geostat Guys Lectures, where I put out all of my lectures. Every single lecture from my classes here at the University of Texas at Austin are also shared online. It's my pleasure to help out. I hope that you find this content useful. I'm always happy to discuss. All right, take care.